So our first session will be uh, by our very own Dr. Jess J. Raman, who will talk, uh, talk about overview of sleep related brain disorders. Very good morning. First of all, uh, thank you, Jim and the IBA for this uh, opportunity to start this uh, sleep master class. Uh, respected uh, chairperson, uh, Professor Dr. Dinesh Ma'am, and uh, our Hotel Medicine Director, Dr. Swami Sir, and all the uh, faculty and delegates. So, warm welcome. So, I will briefly about the overview of uh, sleep related brain disorder. So, you all know very well sleep generally is an uh, underrecognized condition, underdiagnosed, undertreated condition. So, the awareness is a very, very important thing. We are going to discuss in detail about the uh, sleep related brain uh, There are a lot of sleep disorders. I will brief about this. Uh, This is Dr. William Charles Devent, uh, father of uh, sleep medicine. He started the first uh, sleep lab so in the USA. He uh, is the father of uh, polysomnography also. To so start with uh, some clinical uh, case scenarios. So this is the 63-year-old male, known hypertensive on two drugs, presented to the emergency department with slurring of speech and weakness one half of the body for the two hours duration. So in the emergency room, the uh, uh, neurologist uh, uh, evaluated Clinically, as well as the you know, CG scan and MRI in the brain, which shows a normal, there's no abnormal diagnosis. Patient was observed in the neuro ICU. Past history of uh, sleep apnea and test done two years before, uh, which was positive. But uh, he advised to use the CPAP and weight reduction program and all, so it will follow it. So this patient, uh, uh, we advised uh, to undergo the sleep study in view of a previous sleep test and override and history of snoring you know, uh, from the uh, spouse we asked in history. So, uh, uh, we did a repeat sleep test, which shows a very uh, severe obstructive sleep apnea. And we advised to use the CPAP after the CPAP application and weight reduction program and all. Now, he's doing very well after the uh, um, uh, BP control, everything. He's doing well. BP also very well controlled. The sleep apnea is following everything under control. He's a regular uh, follow through the uh, our department. This is another patient uh, who had a stroke. This is a 49 years old uh, male patient. Uh, he had a stroke in 2021. The two times so 21 and 22 also. So, patient uh, is having clinical general device, has some atrial fibrillation and all. And the history of uh, snoring and the daytime sleepiness, uh, all the classical presentation of uh, sleep apnea. Uh, we are pressed to undergo the, the uh, sleep study, uh, level 1 study, which shows a very severe obstructive sleep apnea based on the ASI and the respiratory disturbance index and all. So, they did a CPAP titration and uh, the patient used the CPAP. He's already yeah. very good. So, he's, uh, CPAP is giving very good uh, to this patient. Atrial fibrillation also is uh, almost is normalizing. Usually, patient took some medications for atrial fibrillation, tablet cardone and all. Now, it's almost is uh, stabilizing without drugs, only the CPAP. So, giving a lot of confusion uh, to this patient. And uh, this is uh, other patient, uh, same kind of uh, recurrent. Uh, uh, stroke due to the you know, uh, embolic stroke because of the population for which uh, we provide the um, pacemaker initiation and the readers will be asked the history and all patient is obese and having a lot of uh, snoring and radiant sleepiness etc. So this patient evaluated for sleep apnea which was positive again uh, sleep apnea addition of that the uh, sleep apnea device. So you can see here there is a uh, obstructive sleep apnea and the reduced radiant population in the there are several ways. One is the OSA which causes inflammation and will cause the atrial remodeling and produces atrial fibrillation. And the hypoxia, hypoxia itself is the main triggering factor for the arrhythmias, hypertension arrhythmias. And the autonomic imbalance because of the obstructive sleep apnea, which leads to hypertension and heart failure, which eventually leads to atrial fibrillation. And the other mechanism behind is the intrathoracic pressure changes, which leads to heart failure and atrial fibrillation. There are several mechanisms because of the OSC, which leads to EF. This is other case, other patient, which is 60 years old. Uh, uh, complaints of frequency of insulation mainly at night time, nocturnal polyuria, and evaluated uh, by the general physicians initially the diagnosis of apparent prostate hypertrophy and diabetes mellitus and urinary tract infections. So, this patient uh, did all the numerous patients, it's not a diabetic, and you did there's no injury at all. Finally, this patient evaluated by the urologist. The urologist examined everything clinically as well as that was advice, everything's normal, there is no major weakness at all. So, he referred to me for the sleep apnea evaluation. He knows one of the causes of poly, nocturnal polyuria is the uh, sleep apnea. So we did a history and all. Patient had a, a habitual snorer 
and BMI is the 32, there is obesity, and sleep will show the legacy of 38 per hour. So we advise to undergo the CPAP titration. Up there, patient is using CPAP. Now the symptoms are classically has come down. Follow up after two months, there are no nocturnal symptoms. This is the other patient. So the, what is the you know, uh, reason behind the, what is the OSA crossing nocturia? There are three mechanisms. What is the intra, uh, the increase in the intra abdominal pressure? An increase in the HL, HL retic secretions and increase arousal, which leads to not to hear. Last case, this is a 55 year old female, known uh, diabetes and uh, obesity. Patient underwent a uh, lab polycystectomy for calculus polycystitis. Post operatively, patient developed a respiratory distress in the form of dyspnea, tachypnea, and desensitated. So, in the uh, post op uh, war itself, patient received an NIV to maintain the oxygen and other uh, support. Patient requires a high insulin support to control the diabetes. So I was called to see this patient. We evaluated, seeing the patient itself, but he's suspecting the sleep apnea. History is very classical about the snoring, extenuating sleepiness, and witness apnea by the spouse. So, which teaches the clinical diagnosis of OSA. We did a sleep study, we showed severe uh, obstructive sleep apnea. Sleep up started and discharged in a good condition. So, my brief presentation, another 10 to 15 minutes, I'm going to talk about that. So, as per the you know, American Academy of Sleep Medicine, this is the international classification of sleep disorders. There are seven types of uh, sleep disorders. The commonest one is the insomnia. We have a psychiatrist here, Dr. Ramya Mack, from a board consultant. She will be joining on the panel discussion, Madam Shia only. So, insomnia is a very common presentation. Insomnia also, one of the common causes of sleep apnea manifestation, one of, one of the phenotypes is the insomnia type of OSA. So, I will uh, discuss in detail about that. So, sleep related to disorder is a very common disorder. And the other one is the central disorders of hypersomnolence, commonly uh, narcolepsy and uh, uh, syndromes, idiopathic uh, hypersomnia and all. And circadian rhythm sleep like disorders mainly is seen as workers, parasomnia, somnolism, somnolarchy, etc. And sleep later and movement disorders, we have a PLMS, periodic like movement syndrome, and uh, see, uh, there are a lot of syndromes in a neuro, neuro perspective. And sleep, uh, other sleep disorders, we come around. There are seven classifications under the sleep disorders. So, sleep disorder breathing or sleep breathing disorder is a spectrum of uh, disease ranging from snoring. Snoring is the first spectrum, and we have upper airway resistance syndrome and uh, sleep apnea, hypopnea syndrome, and obesity hypoglycemia syndrome. Snoring snoring is an abnormal respiratory sound during sleep because of turbulence of air flow in a narrow airway. Vibrations from the upper ear wall which causes the snoring predominantly is inbuilt sound. And there are two kinds of snoring we come across in the clinical practice. Uh, all the snorer is not a OSA, like all that is not asthma. Simple snoring due to cold allergy or some uh, sinus infection of cold at all. And different face symptoms also sometimes cause uh, snoring. Other one is the habitual snorer, sleep apnea snoring. So breathing passage mainly due to fertile, due to glassal areas, arrows, which causes the uh, upper ear narrowing while sleeping produce partial or complete blockage of the upper ear. Obstructive sleep apnea, also called obstructive sleep apnea syndrome, is the most common type of sleep apnea. It occurs when there are repeated episodes of complete or partial blockage of the upper airway during sleep. This is the pituitary diagram. You can see very clearly there is a narrowed airway and because of the OSA. Prevalence of OSA, India is a uh, high sleep apnea third of the country throughout the world. You can see globally 1 billion, and India has been 52 million people are suffering from the obstructive sleep apnea. So, this is not the symptomatology, day symptom and night symptom. You can start with uh, no daytime symptoms, uh, mainly the excessive daytime sleep, and that's feeling tired, lack of energy, fatigue, early morning headache, diabetes, constipation, memory problems, high BP, depression, anxiety, irritability, and other difficulties. All the uh, day symptoms. Night symptoms mainly the snoring and increase the of urination. There's not a polyuria, already we have a case here. Irregular breathing during sleep and uh, partner witness stoppage of breathing, night sweats, increase to cough. This is one of the reactive airway disease which causes the cough. Any cough, one of the etiology behind is the sleep apnea and sexual dysfunction and palpitations, urinary population and all. So, this slide is a very, very important for the postgraduate and all the practicing doctors. This is the endo phenotype. In the last two past the 10, 10 years, we have a lot of research on the affective sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is generally is a very complex and heterogeneous problem. So based on the, uh, sorry for the poor quality of this number and all, so based on the physiology, we call it the endotype, it's a form classification. So upper area obstruction, arousability, and the drive, that is mainly the uh, drive and the loop gain, muscle function. This is what we can measure 
as of now, research purposes, uh, we can, uh, based on this, we can divide them into the targeted therapy. Based on this, we can give a lot of uh, targeted therapy. So, with the research is very, very important. This is the main trace which involves the lot of endotypes. So, others mainly for the clinical expression type, we call it as the endotype. Based on the symptomatology, we have uh, three symptomatology sleepiness, minimal, and insomnia group. Insomnia is one of the common presentation of the obstructive sleep apnea. Insomnia group predominantly occurs in female populations, and the sleepiness group commonly occurs in the male pattern with a obese uh, episode snorer. And in the symptomatic group, there is no, uh, not much history of any uh, snoring or rating sleepiness, tiredness, and all. But they have a lot of uh, comorbid conditions like uncontrolled diabetes, uncontrolled hypertension. We are evaluating for sleep apnea. This is the one important group. And the comorbid groups, metabolic disease, you all know very well, diabetes, hypertension, dyslipidemia, obesity, we call it as syndrome X. Associated with the uh, sleep apnea, we call it as the syndrome Z. Syndrome Z. This is one of the common uh, comorbid uh, uh, phenotype. Other ones is COPD and OAC, this is one of the common overlap syndrome we come across in our practice. And the third type uh, in the comorbid condition is the cardiovascular disease, mainly hypertension, atrial fibrillation, and congestive heart failure, along with OAC, this is one of the phenotype. And based on the Anthropometric measurements, we have uh, the you know age, gender, and body weight. Age, once age advances, the sleep apnea incidence will be high. And uh, gender-wise, the male, male uh, preponderance uh, till the menopausal age group because of the reason with the hormonal influence in the female patient. And usually male has the uh, longer length of the you know, uh, upper area trachea, which causes the uh, more plasticity. That's why the uh, OSA actually is a male predominant disease. So, till the menopausal time. And body weight, this is that relationship with the body weight. Any increase in body weight will cause more burden in the upper every narrowing plus of area. Now. And based on the biomarkers, uh, we have the ERXI from the PSG, the fitness testing, and the uh, hypoxic burden, microRNA, the blood level. This is all the info we can uh, monitor. Using the biomarker, we can pinpoint the diagnosis, what kind of uh, OAC it is. Now, based on the mortality, mobility, and the care of OEMs, and based on the pulsography, we can divide into two kinds of uh, OAC. What is the rapid OAC? Rapid angle OAC. This leads uh, to CPAP treatment in the later, later part also. So we uh, basically use the patient, use the CPAP uh, throughout the sleeping time. Because of the late half, if you, you know, use only the first half, 2 p.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., you remove the mask. So 3, 3 a.m., 4 a.m., patient develop a lot of uh, rapid OAC, which causes a lot of problems. So we address the patient to use the throughout the sleep from 11 a.m. to uh, 5 a.m. 6 hours. And this is the only thing we call the position of OSA. We can clearly get from the level 1 study. So, treatment is only, you know, uh, position treatment. Black lipid is positive. We believe all the symptomatology. By based on the PSG, we see the, uh, the spine headache size is very high. Means this is more in favor of uh, the position of OSA. So, these are the uh, brief uh, classifications based on the clinical symptomatology and pathophysiology. This is very important for the Targeted therapy, individual treatment. How is we are not practicing in a bureau of medicine, medicine? So we have to have the pinpoint with diagnosis and treat accordingly. Not uh, uh, one size does not fit for all. This is the basis we have to follow and uh, see all the patients. So CPAP is not working everybody. Surgery is also not working everybody. So we have to pinpoint and to see all the human phenotype, phenotype. This is very, very important for the uh, diagnosis and treatment purpose. So, pump classification, P stands for uh, P grip, that is endopharyngeal pressure associated with the upper grip collapse. A stands for the arousal threshold. Arousal threshold defined as the level of inspiratory effort measured by the esophageal epiglottic pressure at which obstructive movement terminates with an arousal of sleep. L for loop gain, that is a ventilatory control system, and M for muscle recovery. There are 20 muscles take part in the upper, upper airway, mainly the, like in the glass, high glasses, etc. So these uh, these classify patients according to the pathophysiologic traits in three different groups, subgroups. This is a POM one. This group involves about 23 percent of OSA patients and is characterized by a high anatomy collapse of the That is a bit higher than uh, plus 2.5 centimeter of burden. Weight. Uh, these uh, patients you know, take predominantly mostly the uh, weight class, position therapy, oral appliances, and the CPAP. And upper area surgery or the first line, first line treatment, as this treatment focuses on the anatomic factors, these anatomic treatments. POM2, this is the largest subgroup and involves about 57% of patients with the OSA. It is characterized by an intermediate uh, uh, collapsibility, peak rate between plus 2.5 and minus 2.5 in the water, uh, associated with the abnormal 
non anatomical pathophysiologic traits. These patients are potential candidates for the anatomical treatments. There is no major non anatomic impairment. This is subgroup 2A. Or for a combination of anatomical and non anatomical treatments, more than one non anatomical impairment. This is sub, uh, subgroup 2B. Form 3, that is uh, the scale, this subgroup involves approximately 19% of the OSA patients with low collapsibility, treated less than minus 2.5 centimeter. Associated to the abnormal non anatomical traits. These patients are potential candidates for the non CPAP treatment options such as weight loss, oral appliances, oxygen, drugs which target the root vein or the uh, arousal threshold like acetazolamide, modafinil, sodium fetal, and uh, tonobinol. This is the Gahadi medicine. This is the uh, cluster spice, CPAP, and white CPAP, and sentimental division. Three groups. Disturbed three groups. Symptomatic group and excessive So, this slide shows the pathophysiology mechanisms and consequences of the effect of sleep apnea. The main events, uh, what I say, is the apnea hypopnea, which eventually leads to sleep fragmentation, hypoxemia, and negative pathological pressure. It leads to sympathetic surge, it causes release of uh, catecholamines, and it affects over the human dynamic effect on this cardiovascular system, oxidative stress, inflammation, endothelial dysfunction, and hyperbiotic endocrine dysfunction. Which eventually leads to the you know, hypertension, cardiovascular disease like hypertension, CAD, congestive heart failure, LPRs, and CVA, and other hypertension. The directly leads to endocrinopathy, mainly diabetes and insulin resistance. The sleep fragmentation directly leads to the uh, sleepiness, which leads to accident and poor quality of life, and poor cognitive function, and poor activity function. And this is called the consequences of the OSA. We have a lot of ability questions and to diagnose the patient has a high probability of OSA or the low probability based on the scale. Epo sleep in the scale versus the data sleepiness and post sleep in the scale, Pittsburgh sleep in the sleep body index, and stop and question there. This is a very important question we do it in our regular clinical practice. Short question based on the two screen patients for OSA. And the other thing is a body question. Yeah? So stop and question is something by S stands for uh, snoring and P for tired, O for absorb, and the uh, P for pressure. Band, BMI, age, and next questions. So, we had asked the questions to the patients, uh, give the pamphlet to the, you know, the office secretary to the patients. We had asked the questions like, uh, do you snore loudly, louder than talking, or loud enough to be heard through the close dose, yes or no? Do you often feel tired, fatigue, and sleepy uh, during the daytime, yes or no? Has anyone observed you stop breathing during sleep, yes or no? Do you have, or are you, having are you being treated for high BP? Bam, BMI more than 35 uh, kilograms per meter square, age more than 50, next circumference more than 16 inches. And gender difference. So, a score of two or less is considered a low risk, and a score of five or more high risk for having either moderate or severe obstructive sleep apnea. So, this is other scale to assess the excessive data sleepiness uh, assessment by the EFCO sleepiness scale. So, this is all the you know um, uh, situations we can uh, chance of dosing based on zero means would never dose, one means slight chance of dosing, two means moderate chance of dosing, and uh, three means high chance of dosing. Based on this, we have classified into one if the score is 0 to 6 and 2 if the score is 7 to uh, 10 and 3 if the score is 11 to 13 and 4 if the score is uh, more than 14. The highest high, high the score which leads to uh, more probability of the OSA based on this scale. And this is the common condition due to the practice of uh, medical medicine or due the practice of anesthesia surgery. This is the common condition you have to take, keep in mind that the common association between the uh, sleep disorder being the other diseases is the drug resistant uh, hypertension. And severe obesity, congestive heart failure, pacemakers, and uh, aging population, type 2 diabetes. India, we are the diabetic capital in the world. A lot of diabetic patients, very uncontrolled, we have to evaluate thoroughly. And all hypertensive and appropriate disease patients. Now, once clinically, so, no, uh, so this is of uh, sleep, sleep disorder, we say the diagnosis is based on the uh, uh, sleep study, polysomnography, level 1 study is a gold standard. And uh, level one study used to be done with seven channels. Uh, one map will represent the application of the PSC policy traffic. It's a level one study. And alternatively, we can do the uh, home sleep test with the low, uh, there's a high probability into any major comorbid conditions, into any associated other sleep disorders, sleep apnea, obesity, there is a insomnia, and other related ailments and all. So we go for level one only. There are uh, three levels of uh, 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 Home sleep test type 2 and attended study. Type 3 is uh, poly polygraphic, not polysomnographic, polygraphic, and type 4 is a three channel test mainly for screening purposes. A lot of uh, technology.
technology is coming in for the one speed place and a lot of things are coming in. So we can update periodically. And the uh, next one. Once you diagnose thoroughly about the uh, OSC, the treatment is a uh, multidisciplinary. We involve the uh, ED surgeon, maxillary physician surgeon, and the bariatric surgeon, psychiatrist, endocrine, uh, endocrinologist, involves what kind of treatment we are going to offer, whether it's a path therapy or non path therapy, like any surgical treatment or whole devices, so we can divide them very clearly into uh, other things. Conservative, this gentle measures for everyone, weight loss, primordial prevention, alcohol cessation. Position therapy for the post uh, is a position associated with sleep apnea. Nasal decongestion help in adherence of the sleep apnea very nice. No, no, I don't want to feel like that. No, no, no. Path therapy, even though it's 66% of the impact, nowadays we have a lot of elaborate therapies, path therapies, whole appliances, and various barriers. There are plenty of people who are going to do this. No, 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 no. We are going to do this.
Firstly, I'm asking Ravi Dr. Jairam. He's a driving force. I came here and just caused. Caused every forum. Yes, put up this to us. I'm very happy, sir. You are doing a very good job. You're very good. But the point I want to tell you is about snoring. Snoring is always considered as a villain. But I don't think snoring is something. No, snoring is, if it's snorer, it's not a, I made a passing view about that. Just like all the reasons is not asthma, all those who snore, they are not actually okay. They are always snoring is a deep sleep. As a spiritual person, there are three kinds of sleep. One is the superficial sleep, the deep sleep, the deep dream. The deepest sleep is the best part. If anybody is uh, read the uh, Ramana Maharishi or any other spiritual book, the deepest sleep is always quoted. It's supposed to be near the Arpa. So, the, the it's not, not always that sinister actually. So, not at all that supposed to be straight away subject to sleep studies. No, go to that. More important to me is the daytime sleepiness. Person who, who falls asleep very fast. That is the one indication for asking sleep study. Of course, the question I be told. The other point recently, I had a Opened me up for the sleep study. Now, sleep my medicine was my own first cousin. He had a stroke. What is sleep? Uh, the stroke is one of the complication of uh, options. The, the vice versa also is true. Post stroke sleep apnea. I remember when she is uh, post stroke sleep apnea. I'm surprised. He had a stroke, current stroke. And then for two months back in Madurai. Then he developed this obstructive sleep apnea. So it's the all in the stroke. So it's both ways. Uh, sleep apnea can produce stroke. At the same time, post stroke sleep apnea. Also, please remember that. After that, he was on uh, CPAP. That is a problem. The, the one more question is whether when you put your uh, label as a obstructive sleep apnea, is it lifelong? Uh, is CPAP or can it be uh, reversible or is it like no? Because he was told that he must take it to life a post stroke sleep apnea. That's so why this is my doubt actually. Whether post stroke sleep apnea, he said you have to have a sleep up to your life. Yeah. 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 Parental muscles are important. They tend to fall back, so they might need a black like, I was told by him, don't take life off, just keep back. I was a little uh, rather, you know, my first cousin actually happened. That's why that woke me up actually, and then made me come to this class. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Do all cases of insomnia? Do so they have to undergo sleep uh, tests? Yeah, this is one of the cluster called the sleep apnea due to insomnia. Specific populations are this is different uh, phenotype. So we will evaluate for the uh, whether the patient has OSI or not. So we have some predictors and lifelong. Yeah, we have one of the system under we have psychiatric that Ramya is here. So we have evaluate whether the patient you know, requires the OSI sedation and sleep hygiene or cognitive behavior therapy or we evaluate for the OSI. Definitely, insulin is one parcel of sleep apnea only. We have to evaluate for the sleep apnea. But we want to see. That's so mostly like yeah. sir said, that's a different phenotype of sleep apnea which presents as insomnia, which is more common in women. So uh, females when they suffer from sleep apnea, they may not have doubt snoring. They probably may not even have a high pH. They may usually have air flow limitation. And sometimes, so that's when we do a level three study, we might actually miss the sleep apnea or the air flow limitation component. So for women, they might actually present as insomnia. So for insomnia, sleep study is only indicated when you think that this is actually the phenotype which is presenting as insomnia. Otherwise, for insomnia persisting, sleep study is not indicated. Uh, they didn't research also. Come to this. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
excessive daytime sleepiness may be a symptom of underlying sleep apnea. Thank you, sir, for the amazing session. Uh, may I request uh, Dr. Sonakir, sir, to handle the vote of the Dr. Jairam, sir, please. <laughs>